this is Mr. Evans. This video is going to look at exchange rates, uh, particularly in context of the opportunities and threats presented by uh, changing exchange rates. Okay, so exchange rates can be defined as the price of one currency in terms of another. Um, it's the 1st of September today. I've uh, just uh, had a look taking down these um, uh, exchange rates from the internet. So what this is telling me is that one uh, pound today will buy me one uh, US dollar 29, one, uh, one dollar 29, one euro and eight cents, um, which isn't very much at all really, historically. Um, and you can go through the other ones and have a look at them. Uh, on the other hand, one dollar will buy me 77 pence, one euro buys me 92 pence, etc. Okay. Um, However, these exchange rates are changing all the time. Why are they changing all the time? Because um, just like any other product, the price of currencies is always changing. And the price of currencies is determined by both demand and supply of a currency. So I'll quickly just go through this. You don't uh, need to know it in great detail. Um, but what drives demand for a currency? Well, first of all, if there is high demand for a currency, just like anything else, it's going to push the price up. Um, demand for a currency, so let's just say demand for the pound, um, is going to be driven by exports. So the more exports we make, British companies want to be paid in pounds. They don't want euros, they don't want yen. So uh, what happens when somebody from abroad buys a British product? Okay, the consumer might buy it in euros, but the company is then going to have to sell those euros and buy pounds, increasing demand for pounds and pushing up the price of pounds. Okay, so the more exports we sell overseas, the more demand there is for pounds, which pushes up the price of pounds. Inward FDI, so this is foreign direct investment. When Toyota, for example, come and build a factory over here, um, with the greatest respect, we don't want the, the yen. What we want is, uh, you know, the, the, the land that they're buying is costed, is, is priced in pounds. The Toyota need to sell their yen, they need to buy pounds in order for them to buy that land, employ the people who are going to work there, etc. Um, if there are increases in interest rates, it suddenly becomes far more attractive for people to put their money in British banks. Um, if interest rates go up, it means that savers get more return for their uh, for their money. So that might drive demand for pounds. Um, and speculation is a, is a huge industry, a massive industry. It's called hot money sometimes. These speculators, currency speculators, are people who um, look at the prices of currencies and might decide that the price is too high, uh, is um, too low. So the price of the pound might be considered quite low at the moment. And therefore, speculators would want to buy pounds now while the price is low so they can sell them later when the price is high. Um, the supply of a currency, well, it really goes the other way. When we buy um, an iPhone or a BMW, okay, BMW want euros. That's, that's, they're a German company. They want to pay their workers in euros. They want to report their profit in euros. So while we might be pay pounds for our BMWs at the uh, shop when we buy them, BMW will exchange those pounds for euros and it increases the supply and the number of pounds that are available on the market and, and leads to an, uh, a fall in the price. Outward FDI, when we're, we're building factories in France, we need to sell our pounds to buy euros. Falls in the interest rate, people might take their money out of the UK bank accounts and uh, invest in a bank account where they get a higher return and speculation. If people think the uh, price of a currency is overvalued and it's going to fall. These speculators, they sell while the price is high before the price falls. Um, and that increases the supply of pounds. So this, again, is a chart I've taken today. Um, and it shows the value of the pound to the euro over the last um, five or so years. So if we have a look at trends, between 2013 and really right up to June 2016, the value of the pound was increasing. Uh, the pound was appreciating, becoming more valuable against the euro. And we got up to a high of about one euro 45. So for one pound, I would get one euro 45 cents in return. Um, however, 
this dramatic event here, June 2016, can you guess what it was? Well, of course, it was Brexit. Um, and as soon as uh, the UK voted to leave the EU, it actually undermined confidence in the pound. People was, were suddenly unsure of what was going to happen, and there is still quite a lot of uncertainty, and the pound fell dramatically against the euro. Um, right up to about the start of 2017, the slide in the pound. And since the start of 2017, it's actually been the euro getting stronger that's driven this kind of uh, decline here. People getting quite confident in the euro, um, and that's uh, driven down the value of the pound even further against it. And now we're at a value of, now for my pound, I only get one euro eight. So you can see that the value of the pound has fallen. Before I was getting one euro uh, 45 cents, now I only get one euro eight cents. Okay, the value of the pound has depreciated. So these changes in the value of a currency present lots of opportunities and lots of threats for businesses. So let's just work through what happens uh, when there's a currency depreciation. What kind of opportunities and threats might that create? Well, the price of imported goods rises. So um, if we're buying products from um, uh, France, okay, before, uh, before the currency decreased in value, uh, we could buy lots of products from France with our, with our money. Now the pound is worth less. We need to exchange more pounds to buy the same amount of goods. So the price of imports has gone up. That will make UK businesses more competitive. Maybe there's an opportunity, if there's a currency depreciation, for, say, you know, that French cheese I was buying before suddenly it becomes more expensive for me. I need to exchange more pounds for the same amount of euros. Um, maybe there, there's an opportunity for British businesses, British cheese manufacturers, to sell more UK cheese because um, it becomes relatively cheaper. Um, also, the price of exports falls. Okay, The price of goods made in the UK in pounds um, and sold overseas is going to fall. UK businesses are going to become more competitive. Previously, for a... Uh, uh, item that cost uh, let's say 10 pounds when the exchange rate was 1 euro 45 that cost around uh, 14 euros now um, it costs far closer to 10 euros so that product has become um, uh, much cheaper for uh, for people buying it overseas meaning UK businesses are more competitive UK products are cheaper maybe will increase uh, sales overseas of course, it's worth reminding, as long as we keep the price the same in pounds, we still get the same amount of pounds. It's only in euros that the price falls. The cost of imported raw materials is going to rise, however. So if I'm a company that um, imports a lot of raw materials, because the price of the pounds has fallen, uh, the cost of those imports is going to go up. So I may need to look elsewhere for maybe change suppliers, see if I can find a better domestic supplier. Um, businesses with operations overseas are going to see an increase in profit margins. Okay, so let's just say we're a business um, and we've got uh, branches in Europe that bring in, I don't know, a hundred thousand pounds a year. Okay, now if uh, sorry, a hundred thousand euros a year. Now last year, for my hundred thousand euros, uh, and I was at, the exchange rate was um, uh, one pound was equal to one euro forty five. Okay, I transferred that 100,000 euros into pounds, it would have equaled a certain number of pounds. Now, that 100,000 euros, um, the euro's got much stronger, it's gonna buy me a lot more pounds. Okay, so if, I, if I'm making money in another currency and the price of the pound falls, um, I can buy more pounds with that same amount of money, and therefore, my profit margins are gonna go up, I'm gonna make more profit. Um, however, a threat might be there will be difficulty recruiting foreign workers. The UK has become far less attractive to workers from, say, Spain or Italy, who before, for every pound they earned in the UK, they were earning one euro forty-five cents. Now, every pound they earn in the UK is only worth one euro eight cents. They, they, they're getting less money for working in the UK in their own currency, um, so there's going to be. Um, less attractive to come and work in the UK, which might create problems for businesses recruiting. Okay, and you, you can reverse all of those things when there's a currency appreciation. 
import, <coughs> the price of imports falls, okay, suddenly uh, we can buy a lot more euros with our pound, meaning that we're uh, incentivized to buy products from uh, producers in the EU because the price of their goods has fallen. Um, the price of British products is, will increase, okay, if there's a currency appreciation, um, <coughs> foreign consumers need to to spend a lot more money to buy that product. Okay, uh, however, the, the costs of production for firms that import raw materials, with the currency appreciation, we can suddenly buy those uh, raw materials a lot cheaper, so that's good news. We can invest and expand overseas, okay? If the, there's a currency appreciation, suddenly a factory in Germany is far cheaper for us to buy than it was when, there was, when the euro was very um, expensive and it's likely to attract workers to the UK because there's a strong currency, people want to be earning pounds. Okay, so lots of different opportunities and threats represented by changes in the exchange rate.